So you're playing that mech tourney, bro? Hell yeah, bro. What gun are you going to shoot, man? Uh, just by Lux at 5.5 BPS. A Lux? Fuck that shit! Planet Eclipse Emac. This is a new gun, a gun that should be very fun. A new thing to review, and a new song for you. It's made of space age polymers, cheap enough for any commoner. It's got the gamma core. What more could you ask for? It's the Emac, as you might have guessed. It's the Emac. Color me impressed. Mechanical paintball is back and more fashionable than ever. The era of speed died over 10 years ago, and the era of refined and slow has entered full swing. I've been a longtime fan of mech paintball, and when I say mech paintball, I mean pure semi-automatic guns without aids like response triggers. I like the speed of the game, the increased freedom of movement compared to formats with electronic ramping, and I like the trigger discipline, when players are forced to consciously pull the trigger for each shot and make every ball count. Less sweet spotting, more gunfighting, more skill, more fun. Even mechanical tournaments are more prevalent now. The Iron City Classic in Pennsylvania has become one of the biggest and most hyped events of the year. I love the idea of mechanical tournaments, and the format is attractive to newer players who don't have the budget to afford a high-end tournament electro gun. It also soothes the concerns of those who are scared off by the higher rates of fire electros bring. However, I've come to disdain what's become commonplace in these mech tournaments, the admittance of electronic guns with a 5.5 BPS cap. I've seen mech three-man tournaments, and let me break down what I saw there. A handful of teams shooting cool retro mechanical coggers and mags, awesome, one team using rental 98s, and the rest of the teams were shooting high-end electros with a 5.5 BPS cap. When it got to finals time, the only remaining teams were shooting either all geos or all luxes. That isn't mechanical paintball. Apologists for electro admittance in mechanical tournaments will try to tell you that, well, some people can't afford to buy a mech gun, and that, 5.5 BPS gives the true mechanical guns the advantage because they can shoot faster than that. But that's a load of bullshit. Nobody's fingers get tired shooting 5.5 BPS on the electro of their choice, but shoot a cocker or a mag for 10 minutes straight and your hands are going to get more cramped than a genie's lamp. The real reason is that most players, particularly those who play modern electro tournament series, want to shoot what they're used to. They go to practice every weekend and shoot the same gun for an entire year. They know how it feels, they know how it shoots, when they play they want familiarity, they want consistency, and they want conveniences like brake beam eyes, modern ergonomics, lightweight, and a gun that can handle brittle tournament paint. They're still playing for money after all, and they'll be damned before they pick up a Tipman 98 or a Spider and use that instead. But those excuses don't work anymore, because now we have the EMEC. Ugh, oh, the EMEC. Oh goodness gracious, the EMEC. What a machine. The EMEC is a gamma core powered, hinge frame sporting, whisper quiet shooting Widowmaker available for just a hair over $200. It is the most important mechanical gun since the Empire Resurrection in 2013. And it's half the price of that gun, and it beats it in almost every performance category outside the stock barrel. The EMEC is a generational gun. It shoots so good it feels like cheating. I found it effortless to rip fast mechanical ropes from it and put ball on ball on target. I shot people off the brake, I snapshot people, I've put dozens of cases through it, and I've yet to break a single ball or short stroke it. I'm not even sure it's possible to short stroke it. It remains a purely mechanical experience while maintaining a modern profile that's ergonomically correct, and all at a price that nearly everyone in paintball can afford. And since it was designed as a field rental in the first place, newer players can experience top quality shot consistency on their first outing, and it might help them get into paintball. And those tournament bros who can't be bothered to use anything outside their comfort zone can rejoice too, since the EMEC is just a gamma core bolt engine in a composite body. Everybody wins, and mech tournaments can finally live up to their namesake. Looking at the gun, it's pretty bare bones, but that's just fine. The box has those nice thick foam cutouts that Eclipse has been using since the 05 Ego. The manual is fantastic as always, and even that stock rental barrel is polished surprisingly well considering how basic it is. The body shell is modified slightly from the Etha 2 on which the EMEC is heavily derived from, but despite changing the mold to alter the body lines, Eclipse elected to not change the Etha badge on the side for unknown reasons. Perhaps that'll be changed in future revisions. The front grip no longer houses a battery, and while chunky, it's very comfortable, and handling the EMEC is a breeze. Rounding out things are a set of grippy, toolless grips for maximum grippage, and Eclipse's standard glass-reinforced nylon feed neck that they've been using since the E-Tech 3 in 2010. 
No on off out of the box, though you're welcome to purchase a Pops ASA if you're so inclined, but I don't think it's needed at this price point. The gun hardly retains any air anyways. I find it difficult to express anything negative about this gun from my experiences using it so far, and I've been using the EMEC over a year at this point. Maybe it would be cool to have some colored bodies? But now people are making 3D printed ones, so the homebrew EMEC scene is already heating up. Like I said before, the EMEC shoots great. <laughs> I love my cockers, but it's nice to have a higher-end mechanical gun that I don't have to worry about timing or short-stroking. It's even fantastic in the cold, and it's a great loaner for newer players, too. It shoots better than any mech ion or gog enemy I've ever shot by a large margin. No mushy trigger or squishy sound signature. Hell, I even like the hinge frame more than that slider frame that comes on the more expensive G-Mech. I really do. I guess that goes back to my hinge frame preference on cockers. In the last five years or so, mechanical guns have become more than just the entry-level staples of the game, and have made inroads on recapturing the mid- to high-end market once more. Like the cockers and mags of the 90s and early 2000s, there are brand new high-end mechanical guns that are selling for over a grand these days. The EMEC puts a lot of these guns to shame in terms of bang for the buck, and I'm so glad I have one. It's going to have a place in my gear bag for a long time to come. See you guys later.